Hello, and welcome to LEGO Mindstorm's EV3 Basics Programming Screen Overview. The programming screen is basically made up of five distinct areas. The canvas, the palette, the hardware page, toolbar, and the menus. Let's get started. So in order to get to programming, you must first get to the programming page. Now, if you recall, one way of doing it is hitting File, New Project, Program, Open. That will open up a new project and program. You could also go to the File menu, New Project, Program. That will open up a new project and program. But the easiest way is actually to click this plus sign and simply add a project. So one of the first things you should notice is that we now have a project tab and a program tab along with this canvas area here. This canvas area is where we will do the actual programming. To make room for that, we're going to go ahead and close this content editor. We don't have a lot of use for that, so we won't be using it. Just go ahead and close that out by clicking. Getting back to our canvas area, Notice this item that's floating in midair here. It is what is known as a programming block, and this particular one is a start block and is loaded with each new program by default. And you can see this, but if I click a new program, open a new program by clicking the plus sign, adding new programs, it is there every time. The other thing that happens by default is the naming convention for these programs. You notice that it goes from program to program two to program three to program four. Now that could get very confusing in the long run if you have multiple programs under one project. So to rename a program, simply double click it, which highlights it, type in what you want, hit enter, and it's changed. Now if you like, you can also add a project. Same as you do with the programs, you simply click the plus sign to the right of the tab, add a project, you get a new project. Unlike the programs, you can't simply double click to rename. You actually have to go into File, Save Project As, and rename it. I'm not going to though. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and close that project out. And notice that it's project two, same as with the programs. The more projects you add, it just sequentially adds a number. With this area being the canvas, directly below is the palette in which we get our programming blocks. And with each color type down here, you'll notice as we hover, it gives the particular function of those blocks. For instance, the green is action, the orange is flow. Now if you notice, right here is the start block. So that tells us that the start block, being that it has an orange band across the top, is part of the flow block family. Then we move on. We have the sensors, the data operations, the advanced. Then this one has no blocks. And that is because this is where you actually can compile programming into one block and place it here for later use. Now, for our purposes today, We'll be focusing primarily on the green action blocks and the orange flow control blocks, which I'll just refer to as flow blocks. Now, if you notice, as you hover over these blocks, you get an idea of what they're actually meant to be used for. Same thing with the orange flow blocks. Since we'll be using the action blocks and the flow blocks later in our exercises, we're going to stop there for now. To the right of that is the hardware page, and that is where all the interacting between computer and robot occur. But you do have to have your robot turned on and plugged in for any information to show up here. And I do not, and that is why there is really no information to be had. But one of the important areas of interest is the port view. You'll notice it's A through D and 1 through 4 which coincidentally matches your brick in which you have the motors plugged into ports A through D and the sensors will plug into ports one through four. Also of importance are these buttons to the right, the download, 
the run and download, and the run select. These will make much more sense later on when we get into the downloading to the brick hardware page details section. Continuing on, let's move up here to the toolbar, which affects the canvas area, starting with the select arrow. As by default, that's what we have, but you can also grab the hand, if you will, and use that to move your canvas around. But you can also use your mouse wheel, as well as your arrow keys. Also of interest is the save project. Just as if you use the file menu selections, you can save your project here and give it a name. And if you did, that would actually change this project title right here. And then you have your undo, your redo, and your zooms. Pretty standard fare. And this brings us to the upper left-hand corner to the menu area, which is very similar to look and feel of Microsoft menu area, which you have the file, edit, tools, help, and the file is very similar as far as content goes and even hotkeys as well as the edit. The tools are a bit different, but here again, under help, show EV3 help is probably the most important thing I can direct you to. And that about covers this section.